Hi guys and welcome back to Hearthstone Champions League. This is Nimsh and I'm here with Aqua Blood. And we're going to see Show vs. Eco coming up next in just a moment. How are you doing, Aqua? Very good. I had a very good start to the day as well. A clutch game between Oskaka and Stan Sifka. Oskaka is going to be going through. And now we have uh, two players who had very clutch moments of their own during the qualifiers. Eco with that Vitality Totem and Show, like you said, with the knife juggle incident. So. It'd be interesting to see uh, how that affects this game. Well, who can get uh, the uh, RNG on their side? Absolutely, and uh, let's talk about our lineups as well. So, Ecop is bringing Warrior Mage and Warlock, and I think he was playing Temple Mage before, so he might be bringing the same exact, exact lineup where Warrior will be Patron, Mage will be Temple, and Warlock is probably Zoo, and Sho is bringing Warrior Druid and Paladin. What, what would you expect from him? Now, Sho is someone who's uh, been considered as kind of a warrior expert, but he can play both. Uh, he can play both patron and control. So I'm expecting patron. I think patron, mid range steward, and secret paladin is quite a consistent lineup. Uh, Ecop, on the other hand, uh, warrior. I'm not too sure. I can't quite recall seeing Ecop play warrior in recent times. But like Zoo and Mage seem to suit him very nicely. You know more, a lot more about Ecop than I do because you used to be former teammates with him. Oh yeah, absolutely. But um, you know, right now I'm former teammates. So I don't know exactly what he's bringing, but uh, I'm, I'm sure like Ecop overall likes the e control decks, and he loves the control decks most of the time. But um, now he is succumbing to more of a mid range, I think, with both Patron and um, Tempo Mage. And as you can see, uh, we are going to see that Tempo Mage versus the Druid deck, which is a really good ma match uh, for Ecop. So he did hit what he wanted. Yeah, Ecop queues into the great matchup straight away. Although, Sho does have Double Aspirant, which is a card that has been cycled out uh, a little bit in the meta recently. And Firebat did say when people expect Aspirant, uh, it becomes a lot weaker because people mulligan against it. But when people don't expect Aspirant, it becomes stronger. So maybe Sho's in the mentality now that because people have been saying that Aspirant is not being played, it's his time to sneak it back in because people won't be mulligan against it anymore. Oh man, can those arcane missiles hit? Nope. So that's a bad hit for Ecop. Yeah, that's pretty tough. I mean, he could clear up this uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice now if he wants, because he'll still have board of Aspirant, or he could just drop the Aspirant now and kind of ignore it. But do you really want to ignore that little gnome? She can uh, do some crazy stuff if she's left alone. Well, apparently uh, he did ignore it, so now Ecop has an opportunity to play double unstable portal. Unless he gets a minion. Oh, man, that's a good minion to play. Can he get something to... No, all right, so no spells here. And this is a terrible minion to play. <laughs> oh, man, that's something you don't want to see. Uh, is there anything that could activate that in Tempo Mage unless you're running, like, Clockwork Gnome and get the Taunt activated? Like, what can what can you do with that card? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm not sure, actually. Um, there might be something. There might be something. Um, but uh, I would say that there is a possibility that you can activate it from the portal. But uh, now we know that two portals are gone. And one is an Ancient Watcher. Well, you know, it's still a 3-4 for zero mana, if you look at it. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, good stats. Uh, a good body. Uh, no Clockwork Gnomes. Unless he cops running them, we don't know yet. But that Ancient Watcher will probably best stay in his hand, just so Sho doesn't know what it is, and he may think it's something threatening. So it's better to use that as a mind game than just chucking a 4-5 down and it not doing anything for the rest of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, so um, for Sho, what can he do now? He can coin nothing. Oh, he can coin the swipe, <laughs> so he can swipe at least. But uh, that's basically it, right? Like, if you go for Aspirin, does it do much? No, you're gonna lose. It. It's gonna get traded into. You lose a mana crystal. You Coin might... swipe doesn't seem too bad. You might it trade yourself, actually. Oh, that you have to keep the mana crystal uh, intact, so you can maybe get a five drop next turn without the coin. Uh, but he's guaranteed a five drop next turn, and uh, he's guaranteed another five what? after on his uh, on his turn five. So uh, swipe may might be an answer just to deal with this. Keep that shade intact. Drop the aspirant, uh, keep an aspirant in hand, but then again, aspirant just becomes a, a bad river croc if you leave it in hand too long. So you might want to get it down now and uh, just build some pressure. 
Alright, so apparently he goes for the swipe, and um, to be honest, there are not that many swipe targets in the in this kind of mage. Like, uh, most of the creatures, they have two health instead, and... Oh, uh, wow. Oh, yeah, this is really good for Ika, but uh, other than that, he will be able only to develop Ancient Watcher. Can he silence it at some point? Like, how can you even use Ancient Watcher in this deck? I don't think there is any way. I like he's considering a Shredder, because if you play the Shredder now, you get Minion on board. Uh, that Shade is just stuck in, stayed in the shadows. Show has not showed any intention of using him yet. So he may be able to get the Flame Cannon off next to him while he still has something on board. He does clear the Shade with the Flame Cannon, but he doesn't develop any tempo himself. So I think I prefer the Shredder over Flame Cannon. What do you think? Yeah, I prefer the Shredder for sure. Because the Shredder contests the Shade if the Shade decides to attack. And if the Shade doesn't atta uh, attack, you you know next turn is to score. So if there's something like a Keeper of the Grove, you still kill the Keeper and uh, you have the Flame Cannon for the next turn. And you c continue having a minion on board. So the, I think the Shredder was really good for for Ika. But now Shao can only play this Aspirin, which is exactly what Ika wants. That would be a super easy kill, uh, denying the Mana Crystal. And then he will be able to Flame Cannon the Shade. And if you draw something like a Flame Waker on top of that, that'll be a lot of pressure on show. This is a bad matchup for the Druid. So, yeah, this could be a swing moment for Ecop, depending on what he draws next. But, yeah, the Aspirin plus Hero Power is not going to line up well for show, especially with that Flame Cannon sitting back and the pile that Shredder being able to clean up so nicely. Yeah, and, and uh, this is, as you mentioned, a bad matchup, but uh, it hasn't even started yet. The, the fact that there are cards like. Uh, mirror entity that are being played by mage players and a, a great fireball for Druid of the Claw. So as long as Ecop is able to maintain tempo on board and advantage on board, he will be able to use those removal cards and uh, pressure with damage. But uh, this game is not over yet, so we'll see how it goes. This is obviously a really bad turn for Sho and a great turn for Ecop. But Sho still has an opportunity for a couple of swing turns coming forward. He has a Druid of the Claw in hand, so he has a 4-6 body which he can drop down. Uh, it will get answered by a fireball, but he has minions in hand to keep playing and keep replenishing the board. He could be in that awful situation where he just has, you know, spells, reactive spells. Uh, he can't find an arcane intellect. He doesn't find a minion. I think a minion would have been better in this situation. There's the Flame Waker, so it was one draw away, but he still gets that nice clear with the Flame Cow. Oh, the Doomsayer comes down! Oh, man. Do you? Yeah. Well, this is this is super awkward. <laughs> I guess you can still flame cannon to get rid of it, and you do block turn five play from uh, from show. So I think the doomsayer actually is a bit better than just having a random one one. Uh, Ecop, I don't know if he's happy about it, but that's not terrible. I mean, he slows his druid down. Next turn, he has flame waker, arcane, arcane intellect if he wants it, or maybe he'll draw something a little bit better. So now he gets initiative on board and Sho's going to have to play something down and that Flame Waker might stick around if Sho doesn't find, say, a, a, some removal of some sort. But even if, even if he did find removal and had to commit that to get rid of it, he probably won't be able to play a minion as well. Yeah, I think the important fact is that Ikob actually found the Azur Drake. So for the next turn, he can just play Azur Drake, Mana Worm, and Arcane Blast. Oh, wow, he just doesn't even need that, but uh, still. Good, good removal card, anyway. Yeah, that's a, a nice, clean answer to that Flame Waker. Probably one of the best ways for Druids to deal with it outside of spells, because they keep a minion on board. But as we know, this Arcane Blast is going to clear that really nicely. And now Ecop again is in the driver's seat. And Sho is just dropping minions, hoping he doesn't have the answers. I'm starting to like that Ancient Watcher, by the way, you know? Because the fact that Ecop is not playing it might make Sho a bit... Um, curious like what what is that card like i know he has a minion from unstable portal and he he hasn't played it yet like what is the minion is it mind control tech like it has to be a reactive minion right because if that wouldn't be a reactive minion he would not play it so right now ecop is having that advantage but oh my god flame cannon again the perfect answer here with a drake to boot so again another 4-4 comes down another mana worm followed by the flame cannon this is just snowball and out of control for ecop and like you said, that Ancient Watcher, he's got, don't play it, keep it as a mind game. I like uh, Sho having a big question mark. Maybe she just showed it to Sho now, just to say, it was just an Ancient Watcher, you wouldn't, didn't have anything to worry about. <laughs> yeah, I guess. At, at this point, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, there's so much power, and what, Sho can only 
Like, swipe doesn't matter here. You will want to swipe next turn, but if you, Azure Drake, swipe on 9, aren't you just dead? Like, if you go for Dr. Boom, are you are you just dead? You probably are dead. I mean, we know he's dead, but the situation is so bad that Dr. Boom might be on the play here. You can't even low fab to save yourself at this point. Yeah, so... Because Fireball will still go through. Um, yeah, it's kind of just slam that Dr. Boom, hope Ecop doesn't have enough damage to kill you with two Mana Words and two Azure Drakes on the board. Uh, so, yeah, it's a bit of a hope needed from show here, but it's looking pretty bleak. Yeah, absolutely. This is the Dr. Boom. Please save me, Dr. Boom. But uh, it will not work. There's another Dr. Boom. It doesn't matter, though. There is a Fireball in hand. So is Ecop going to BM? He's considering it, I think. He's thinking, how can I make show tilt at this point? He's taking it so slow as well. He has it there, but he he's might, playing those mind games. He might fireball Dr. Boom. No? All right. <laughs> I was thinking, like, fireball Dr. Boom and then uh, run the, the worms to face and uh, ping face with... Uh, that should be enough for, like, small, slight BM, but I just wanted to make sure he had it. Very slow win from their e cop. Taking his time, making sure Show knows he's willing to even take his time when he has the win. Um, I mean, we don't see a lot of evidence of like mind games sometimes from Hearthstone, but Hoy and e cop are definitely two players that come to mind when it comes to stuff like this. And I quite like it because if you can get in your opponent's head, you can almost force a misplay sometimes if they start panicking, so they start getting frustrated. And it's an element of Hearthstone which I like to like to see a lot. Absolutely. I mean, there are two schools, you know. So one school is that you want to have a fair play match where you just play your cards and have a, a cheerful atmosphere. And the other school is to use every advantage possible within legal bounds. And, uh, and moral bounds, so it, it really depends on the player, and some players use that advantage and they try to mind game their, oppon uh, their opponents and uh, maybe irritate them a bit so that they make misplays, which is a, a valid strategy, and some of them refrain from doing that, and, um, and they still succeed, so it's opinion-based, mostly. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if in an ideal world, in Hearthstone, I'd like two players sat in front of each other, with the screens just low enough so they can look in each other's eyes. So if you make a play, you just look at the opponent's eyes with a big smile on your face, and you can play those uh, mind games, but it's a little harder when you can't interact with your opponent on kind of a physical level. But little things like that can frustrate your opponent. I mean, Sho just rolled his eyes, and I don't know whether that was in response to his hand, but like little things like that can make you play uh, poorly, and that can be a tremendous advantage if you can utilize those mind games. Absolutely, and, and this is why I also like the live tournaments where people sit mm -hmm. in front of each other, but um, even an online tournament still has a, a big dosage of stress. Um, the players cannot see them, uh, each other, but they know uh, each other, so they, they've met before. They they, they might be friends, they, they might be enemies, so there is still something going on between them. But right now, with this matchup, I've, who do you think has an advantage? Well, at the moment, I think Ecop does, just because he has the knife juggler, he has a minion to put down, and no fiery. Oh, actually, excuse me, there is a fiery war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just... just waiting for the juggler. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll, I take that back. I feel like Show is uh, in a pretty good spot here, especially with an unstable ghoul. It uh, doesn't interact with the implosion that well. And a Frothing Berserker to follow up as well. And that minion can really get out of control. But not only that, it has a nice health pool to challenge a lot of the early pressure minions from Ecop. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ecop got luck with the Brown Bronze Beard, but now Show can decide to just attack with the unstable ghoul and get a battle rage for two mana. Or just go for the, uh, go from that Frothing Berserker, as you mentioned, just uh, giving him a, a nice minion on board to to do whatever he wants. And then uh, also like keeping his unstable ghoul, ghoul alive, just going for face, so that Brown Bronze cannot pop it this turn. And um, that would make Implosion really awkward. But the Fender Vargas is also nice, just buffing twice, creating a 4-6 taunt. 4-6 taunt with a brilliant effect as well, but this Frothing and Berserker is going to get to a level where it can challenge the Bron, uh, Bron, Bran, sorry, get rid of him, and then he has a Shredder to follow up, two Shredders in fact, so he can go back to back Shredder, and Shredder's us, as we all know, a super powerful minion, especially in Zoo as well, because they usually have to commit maybe two to three minions just to clear the whole thing out, yeah, but absolutely. Implosion's a good answer. So now Implosion needs to hit for three at least. 
Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, it doesn't even need the abusive. You might just drop it for board here. And he does, yeah. He might go for phase even. And just, uh, he doesn't need to concern uh, himself with the free two. Free two is going to attack into something anyway. So for now, Ecob is in a good position where he's pressuring and uh, he has some kind of a board. Uh, Show got de um, Death Spite, but uh, a nice whirlwind here to clear. And keeping the minion alive as well. I like that. Um, having minions on board against Zoo is super important. I mean, he could have just dropped the Shredder and uh, swung the ra Raptor into the Argus, but this way, I mean, the Raptor is still a threat. He still has to find an answer to it, and then he can drop the Shredder next to it. So again, having more minion pressure. And that's one thing I've noticed with patrons have recently, is they can really be starved for, starved for minions if you grind them out. Not that Zoo would do that, but uh, you don't want to be in a situation when you have no minions to contest the board. Right, right. But um, overall, I think this matchup is good for Patreon. And uh, it's also important to notice that Eco is playing um, the old version of Zoo, or more like modern one with Bran instead of the Chinese version with Sea Giants and Leroy. So he, he's um, more reliant on cards like Abusive, Dark Peddler, and uh, just fighting, fighting out of the board as he has it. And another thing that Despite did do as well against the Argus, it did set up a nice battle rage. He got two cards, so if he didn't have the Raptor around, he wouldn't have had an opportunity to draw two from that battle rage. And now he's got the Shredder as well. Um, his power on board is a lot better than uh, Ecops. And with that Death Spite sitting in the back. Corsair! There is a blood cell Corsair! Oh, wow! Yeah! <laughs> and he clears the Raptor! Yeah, and he actually creates a ghoul, uh, well, an imp as well, and then imp gangbos can contest the shredder, so suddenly... <laughs> oh, show is like, seriously, you have a pirate to deal with my board? Like, why? Yeah, that's that's pretty rough. I mean, I think show was looking in a great situation until that Corsair showed up. Yeah, he was able to get the Grim Patrons, but now uh, he doesn't have an Activator, even if he would have an Activator there. Uh, because uh, the Death Spite exploded on, on Ecop's terms, Ecop still has this Abusive and Doomguard. Although a Whirlwind would change a lot in a Rage, not gonna do it. I mean, a Whirlwind would let him clear the board and generate two Patrons. Yeah, uh, that would be really good. But these one, uh, one Health Minions are starting to be a problem. Uh, he used his Whirlwind earlier and all in on the game to deal with some uh, one health minions. Hasn't found a second one, lost that death spite in a situation he can control. And that's the strongest way to deal with death spite, especially with a patron follower. But it looks like he's just gonna slam Boom and hope for the best at this point. Yeah, absolutely. I think Boom is really good. And then uh, he also goes for face with a minion, which is important. Uh, he is uh, racing Ecop. He still has Gromash with Inner Rage in his hand, which is 12 damage. And uh, if Ecop is not careful about his health total, he might just die in one big attack. And uh, the bombs can also deal damage to face. So if bombs somehow deal, si deal six, Ecop's in range. Yeah, that's the danger of these bombs. Luckily for Ecop, though, he has a lot of minions on board to soak him up. But like you said, he's not far from that Grom Inner Rage, especially if he gets a Fiery War Extend next to it and starts chipping away at that health total. Ecop might rely on drawing another Argus, or maybe even just a Void Walker to slow him down. But he just go for the Haunted Creeper first. Is he going to use all the tokens? Or is, is he going to use that guy? Is he just racing as well, or is he just killing? I think he needs to kill the Boom. If he goes for the race, he just loses right there. All right, so he goes for the clears. Like, Zul really needs to uh, clear the board as fast as possible. And he knows that if there is just one single whirlwind effect, he will lose this board uh, eventually. So he can clear it right now and still play the Doom Guard. So it's really powerful. But the bombs! Aqua, the bombs! Oh, that's a good bomb so far. That's a good bomb as well, unless Execute gets found. No Execute. Did he miss the attack with the Doom Guard? Yes. I Ooh. think he did. Um, yeah, he played the Doomguard and he wasn't able to attack with it, so he's really upset about it. But uh, the most, the, the more important fact is that Sho can set up lethal. Oh, is he going for Grum right now? Like, if he'll go for Fiery Warx and attack three damage to face, he could set up lethal next turn with Fiery Warx. But uh, I guess Grum is also good because he's not contested. He's forced an Ecop to pick up a powerful Wellman or an abusive Sergeant. I mean, the owl does slow it down, but you're on full health. Uh, can you even clear it's, it? You can't even clear it. No, so. you're dead. It still kills you. you win. 
Yeah, and Shio's gonna take it with that really aggressive Grom, taking a, a favorable matchup, like we said, but that was quite back and forth. Uh, I don't think the attack with the Doomguard would have made any difference anyway. Yeah, so I, I don't agree. think Ecop should be too upset at that point. Absolutely, but he is a perfectionist for sure. So the fact that he missed an attack is definitely upsetting at some point. And um, the thing that he has to do now, he's he, he just has to stop thinking about the missed attack and prepare for the next game because this is an elimination match. If he loses here, he's out of the tournament and he was fighting so hard. Like everybody who's here today was fighting super hard to get in. But Aqua, can you can you remind me who else do we have today? We've seen we've seen Ostkaka versus Stansivka. And Ostkaka won versus Stansivka, eliminated him, and advanced to the top four. Now Show versus Ecop, who's coming next? Well, following up, we have Pavel and Orange. And now Pavel is uh, an exciting player from the kind of Eastern European PNC scene. He's making lots of waves uh, early on in 2015, so that should be a good uh, match, especially with Orange's performance recently. So we got that coming up. And then we have Tice versus Sixo, so Europe's champion versus uh, one of the powerhouses from Navi. And of course, Sixto, you know, has uh, kind of expressed uh, kind of his thoughts about kind of the European preliminaries and stuff like that. So this would be an opportunity for him to kind of, you know, redeem to himself to shine again. And I you know Sixto is a very, very good player, and he shouldn't uh, put himself down too much if he does. I mean, he's very capable. Yeah, but absolutely. yeah, Joe and Ecop here. Now I think Ecop, uh, this tournament would mean a lot to him. Uh, another. An opportunity for him to get back in the spotlight and show as well because shows her uh, although they're both very talented players they've both been quite quiet on the competitive scene recently yeah I think like show doesn't even have that many tournament wins and for for Ecop he had an amazing 2014 but 2015 wasn't that the best for him so he's definitely looking for uh, for some good wins uh, I think his biggest achievement in 2015 was uh, having second place at ATLC with the rest of the guys from C9 but he always is uh, aiming for the top, claiming himself to be the best Carson player in the world. In ECOP fashion, right? Yes. <laughs> and shall yeah, you this... know, he's uh, well, probably one of the best warrior players in the, uh, in the world, if not the, the best. And uh, he, he's still looking for that win after joining Team Liquid. Do you remember Shaw winning? Like, he, he won one tournament, I think, in 2000, early in 2015. Uh, but uh, other than that, he had good performance overall, like many top eights. But uh, I haven't seen him having the being the champion. Yeah, he's been quite quiet over kind of the uh, mid to late 2015. Uh, he was did he get that win on route? I think he did because he was on route before Liquid. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I think so. So yeah, still, I think it's important once you join a new team to try and get kind of like a top finish or even a win under your belt, just to kind of, kind of validate yourself to not only your team members but your like your organization. But Sho is like he's a talented player. He's uh, shown his worth on ladder. He's shown his worth through his kind of innovation through Warrior. And like you said, Ecop is someone who's had a lot of success in the past. So he's probably just wanting to get that momentum at the early start of 2016. And maybe he can find the same amount of success he found in 2014. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and looking at the game at the moment, um, this is Patron versus Druid, which uh, normally uh, gives advantage to the, to the Patron player. Patron should have uh, a better matchup overall, but uh, we've seen many matches like this. And uh, more than often, Druid actually wins them. Uh, the important cards here are the, the Fireworks, the Corsair, and the fact that Ecop has those patrons with Unstable Ghoul. They can work, but for now they are just fighting for the board. And I think Corsair specifically is uh, in this deck to counter those, those Druids, or to make this matchup even better. And the one thing about Patron as well, if you do go against Druid and you find yourself with like Death Spite into Patron in a Rage, that can be enough to lock out a Druid from the game. Uh, but this is a much more fairer match for the Druid. Uh, the one advantage Ecop does have, like you said, having like, access to that Corsair and all these like smaller minions can be frustrating for the Druid. But uh, this is the time in the game where the Druid starts to shine, dropping those big mid-range bodies. Drake's going to come down first, but then he has Forest on the follow-up if he wants. Ancient of Law, and hitting that Force of Nature with Forest is very important, especially if he finds the Savage Roar before then. Yeah, absolutely. If, um, but this is the, the important part for show was that he got um, the Shade of Naxxramas early to be able to res uh, respond to the minions. And uh, Ecop, even if he goes into the trading war, he's still taking damage. Uh, for now, he doesn't have a whirlwind effect or he doesn't have the inner rage, so the patrons will not be played yet. But the fact that he has the patron and he is able to fight for the board is actually pretty good for him already. 
Yep, fighting for the board is super important, and you either do it with a big patron swing, which the Druid can't deal with, or you use these mid-range minions like Throvins, Dread Courses, to so try and keep things at bay until you find those combo pieces. Uh, Ecop again, not finding either a Whirlwind or an Inner Rage. He does get a Shredder, which is a, a nice minion to be able to contest stuff like the Azidrakes uh, that's going to come out. Uh, but at the moment, it's just fighting for the board, trying to find that Whirlwind, that Inner Rage, get that combo down, and hope Show doesn't have an answer to it. It's such an awkward situation for Ecop because you know Shredder is a better minion and you probably do not need the coin that much coming forward. But then if you do not play the Red Corsair here for 3 mana, you, you will have to play it for 4 mana next turn. Uh, because you are going to use a weapon to clear this board. And uh, <laughs> that's actually quite funny. He might go for Unstable Ghoul though if he if he clears the board and I think that's a correct, uh, correct move. If he goes for Unstable Ghoul... You might have an opportunity next turn to go into Patron and attack on Stable Rule to, um, to generate one more Patron, but he opts not to do it. I mean, going into that Unstable Ghoul as well, if you find a Whirlwind as well, that might be enough to kind of push the uh, Druid out of the game. Vorison's going to come down from show, uncontested at the moment, execute in hand for Ecop again, not finding a Whirlwind effect at this point. And once Forreston comes down for the Druid, you start to get worried because they could have a turn seven combo. They could have double Savage or uh, Force Nature in the hand, which is 22 damage from hand. It's a very Maybe scary situation for any player to be in when that Forreston comes down. Yeah, especially with uh, six cards in hand as well. And suddenly Druid as uh, an option to maybe use removal more effectively. Because normally against Patron, you, you can use Wrath, uh, just dealing with my one Patron. And then Swipe is a bit awkward. It, uh, it generates, more, uh, generates more Patrons. But after Torison, suddenly you, you maybe can lay out the Drake with, uh, with the Swipe and uh, actually position yourself to kill a free free Patron and a free two Patron in one swing. So you have those better plays. Yep, and you know, having the Azure Drake uh, reduced as well will definitely help towards that strategy if it does come up. H and Log and the Fish for more cards here, looking for that Savage Roar, so at some point you can kind of pull the trigger on Ecop and get that win. But he does have time, Ecop's uh, quite a healthy life total. There's going to be a lot more fighting for board before Show gets within that kill range. Also, Ecop now has a chance to draw two cards at least um, from that Acolyte of Pain, so he can attack with Acolyte into one of the minions. Uh, see what he draws, obviously like attacking to the 2-3, then he can attack, um, like play Patron, attack with Unstable Ghoul into the 5-5, which uh, is getting executed. That's a Patron. Another well, Dwarf. <laughs> yeah, that's a Dwarf. He can still go with the Patron this turn, I feel. Uh, on the other hand, Double Pilot to Shredder might be, I think Double Pilot to Shredder might be better next turn even. And the fact that he, the, the Ghoul is going to die and he doesn't have any wound effects and he still wants to attack with the Ghoul anyway. So, uh, Patron And he still gets another draw, right? So he may find another Whirlwind effect, but it's a stressful situation because you don't want to, you want to get as much value as you can from the Patron effect. And just generating two Patrons, it might just be too easy for sure to deal with. And he doesn't have an answer for the 5-5 just yet. Alright, so he might go for the Shredders here, but uh, on the other hand, like if you're not using your Patron now, uh, you will be stuck with two Patrons. And, yeah, these uh, are kind of dead cards right now. Exactly. Alright, so he, he went for the Patrons. Let's see how Shoal dissolves the situation. So he knows that if he attacks into the 1-1, uh, he will kill the Unstable Ghoul, he will uh, kill the uh, Acolyte of Pain. He's going to lose the Mana Crystal to this. Right? Or not yep. really? He yeah, he did. he did. But he just gets to drop two big bodies down if he wants, and a Druid of the Claw could follow up as a 4 6. Still has the 5 5, and then he poses a lot of threat on the board. Uh, goes for the Force, and is this a Force of Nature? Clear? Yeah, this is Force uh, for the clear, because Patron doesn't have many cards. Patron only has three cards in hand, and if you're able to deal with uh, whatever is dropped from the Shredders. Oh, uh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, man. Show is laughing. I think the Show is showing up. Again, Ecop in a good situation because of that Shredder drop. Shredders just love Ecop, it seems. Oh, best, wow. best friends for life and death spite and now things start to swing in Ecop's favor in a rage pickup and a death spite will allow him to build a giant patron board next turn but not only that we've just seen the force of nature from show so that's one of his ways he can deal with some of the patrons and right now in his hand he has no spells 
I can deal with him. Oh, he picks up a swipe, but lost his spell power for the Azure Drake. Now it's the second Azure Drake. Yeah, but the good news for Shao is that he actually has some minions that he can play this turn. So he will have something to fight back the patron board. Uh, which means that if he cop attacks, okay, now it is perfect for recap. I think now it might be over actually. Yeah, this is gonna be super tough for sure to deal with. Double whirlwind. Can get at least six patrons. There's even something more important here because with uh, without that whirlwind, Eco was not able to kill uh, Druid of the Claw. But with the whirlwind, not only he gets extra patrons, he kills Druid of the Claw, which protects his uh, other patrons as well. So uh, that was really good for Eco, like on on all levels. That's the power of the patron, and that's why we said this matchup is good for patron overall because something like this can happen. Can Show find a way? Raph is the nice pickup there, but can he still find a way to clear this board somehow? He needs that spell power. If he had that Azure Drake, he might have a an efficient way to deal with this. Uh, yeah, I think he would be able to deal with this with that Azure Drake because uh, he would have been able to swipe as well because it only cost four with the Raph because it got rid. Is there a way, Aqua, to maybe attack with the hero power into one of the patrons, into the free two, uh, create another patron, and then um, can you swipe in a way to deal with the with the board? Like, just use the full board with seven patrons, and uh, yeah, he's going for that. So he'll try to use the full board to be able to not spawn more patrons with swipe and use swipe as effectively as possible, and then use the minion attack and wrath. Yeah, very smart play. This is not a bad response. He still has a wrath, and he still has uh Oh, he still has a Drew de Claw if he wants to use it as well, just to kind of tank him. Uh, he leaves one patron up though. Uh that patron might not do an a lot. I mean Ecop's got one card in hand. We know it's Grim Patron, never copy. He needs another whirlwind effect, uh, or things could still look pretty good for oh. sure. My goodness, he got battle rage and <laughs> And there's a whirlwind effect, so yep, this is looking pretty bleak. <laughs> yeah, he can even slam the second patron here. Drop the second patron, clear the diable files with the free one, drop a whirlwind, and then Joe is again in the same situation he was before. He yeah. looks like he can play a bit more patiently actually. He's gonna maybe hold off, maybe wait for another death spite or another inner rage. Maybe Mm, that's possible. I mean, like, if there is a combo, what happens? So, like, if you slam Grim Patron, uh, attack the, into the 2 2 with the free one, and go for the Whirlwind, if there is a combo, you will be in a weird spot where you have no board and uh, no follow up for now. He still has Dr. Boom in the deck, he still, he still has Gromash in the deck, but uh, Patron will not be a tool for him anymore then. So, uh, this is not a board where you want to come on clear. Or if he sees a combo here, there will be an opportunity to paint him next turn. I like this from Ecop. Because like you said, you put in, put in all your eggs in one basket, right? If you do this, at least uh, if you do it this way, you might force out some other removal from show to get rid of the throbbing. And if a patron like a force of nature, which is sitting in his hand, and Ecop might even find an inner rage next turn, uh, which will generate even more patrons. So he has an opportunity to be patient because his health is so high and he has the board. Oh man, and Shaw is actually going for Force. Uh, he doesn't need to go for Sabjur, he can just go for Shade and Lux Ramas next because this is clearing this board pretty nicely. But this is his se second Force of Nature. So if the patrons show up after this, he will he will be in trouble uh, for patrons because he, he he can still deal with three patrons after that. Like he will have shade on board, so shade is trading with one patron at least, and he still has the rid of the claw. Yeah, Ecop's gonna need to find an extra effect to uh, generate more patrons to make it efficient. Because like you said, he just has answers to it. Grom is something he might not have an answer to straight away. Uh, doing four damage isn't uh, a lot, but nine health is a big problem for Druid. No hard removal, so they rely on stuff like swipes, savage roars, rafts, and minions to deal with uh, their opponent's threats. And Grom alone is quite a big threat at this point. Yeah, but uh, overall, I think this this game is so cool. Uh, we've seen Ecop almost when we've seen Show actually deal with this board, and now Grom and uh, Ecop's still waiting on those patrons. So you know, it's uh, this game is not like one player is clearly winning. It's still going on and anybody can take this game still. Very back and forth. Um, Joe actually sets quite a threatening board here. He has lost his uh, last force of nature, but Savage Raw 
Savage Raw is still a threat, especially if you've got a, a nice healthy board. And at this point, uh, just from the board itself, Ecop can't deal with a 4-6 taunt. But we do see the Patron might come down here with the Whirlwind, drop the Execute, and then slam 10 to face for show. And then he demands someone like a big game hunter to deal with it. Unless, unless there is a... Um, is the Shredder going to die? Because like if uh, if he decides to, to execute the Shredder, that might be troublesome. But what do you do? Like Maybe Dr. Boom is still at play. And Whirlwind? Do you Whirlwind Dr. Boom? Oh man, doesn't seem good. Especially because you have those patrons. Uh, yeah, it is a, it's kind of an awkward spot. Uh, I think Dr. Boom might just be the way. Maybe Whirlwind execute uh, and then play Dr. Boom. And then you just have so much power on board. One big game hunter won't be enough. You're demanding two big game hunters at this point. And maybe some trade-in. So, yeah, I think that's probably the best line you could have went with. Yeah, and you know double force is gone. So, you just require a clear here from show. If he gets big game hunter, does it change much? He got his own boom, which is a blank at this point. Yeah, Dr. Boom's not going to be enough here. Uh, those boom bots pose such a big threat as well because any damage they do to the face is just going to reinforce a win from Grom or Dr. Boom. So Savage Rose is going to come down here. Uh, he can deal with one of the big threats, uh, but what else can he do? I guess he can clear Grom. He needs um, something from uh, the Shredder, I guess, to win. Something that deals attack, maybe... Um, a flame song, a stable bull. Well, a free two blank is not helping here for sure. Blue Girl Warrior would have been great there. I uh, would have been able to clear that up. So you're going to attack a bomb and to hope that attack into Dr. Boom and then hope the bombs actually clear out <laughs> this board. Oh my god, this, can, this will actually happen. He's hoping the chaos of the bombs do enough here. Alright, where's this going to go? The bomb hits Dr. Boom and doesn't really do anything. All right, he's still not dead on board. He's still not dead. There's eight damage, and he got yep. his own Doctor Boom. So he just needs a little bit more to finish this game. Fiery Borax <laughs> is exactly what he needed to finish this game, and Ecop's gonna take a two-one lead over Show. What a tense match that was. That was so back and forth. It could have wow. could have went any way, really. Yeah, it was it was really cool. And uh, you know, we've seen those uh, those matches, Patron versus Druid, many times before. But uh, like every time I see a really good match, it, it feels like I'm seeing it for the first time. And both players really on edge, making great decisions. And uh, being in those different situations, because there, there were so many, there were so many different lines of play that they could have taken. I think Ecop had quite a few different ways he could have done it, and especially in that final turn, one of those final turns where he could have played uh, Patron of Whirlwind and say Executed, but he went for the Doctor Do Doctor Boom play, and I think that is what ultimately locks Joe out right? because he demanded so much from him to be able to stay in the game. And uh, show uh, tried his hardest to fight back, but couldn't get it. So we're going to go into the potentially the final game if Ecop can get a win here. And it looks like a Zulok to me. Oh, we've seen it already, haven't we? Yeah, uh, with Brown Bronze Beard. So yeah, this is this is his this is his last deck, and uh, Zulver Paladin should be a, a, an okay matchup for for Ecop. And then Zul versus Druid will be a very good matchup for Ecop. So Ecop positioned himself. Uh, nicely in the in this lineup fight. And Void Walker is not a bad start. You know, free health can be a bit of a nuisance for the Paladin to deal with uh, from the start in turns. They do find more answers later on, but Ecop definitely has the initiative here. Gonna do what Zoo does best, drop lots of dudes down, and then Show will probably be playing more reactive to start with, which has kind of been the story of Show so far in this series. I think Ecop has mostly had the initiative in the games. Um, Shaw actually is playing Aldor Peacekeeper. Uh, we know this is a secret paladin, but uh, this is his own take with Aldor's. A bit different than the standard ones. Mm, he's probably not playing Divine uh, Favor in this build, but um, you can maybe fit one. But overall with uh, Belchers, maybe two Belchers, two uh, Peacekeepers. Uh, what do you think about his hand? Like, I, I don't like it for now. He doesn't have that early game pressure, which he needs so badly. Uh, being able to develop a 1-1 one, one is just not enough. The spider deals with it, no problem at all. Knife Juggler comes down. So now uh, the Knife Juggler has a lot of potential to do damage to anything. 
that show plays just from knife hits from the, the haunted creeper you know overwhelming sitting there ready dark iron dwarf there's just too much pressure coming from the zoolark at this point and show is going to need some miracles to kind of fight back he's going to need to just survive and aldo peacekeeper is a card that's going to help him i think what show needs is uh, a consecration that's uh, that's something that can turn this game around still if he doesn't find a consecration it'll be really hard for him to to fight back ecop knows how to play this matchup which is literally just clearing the board every time you, you get an opportunity hitting even hitting that four um against the other peacekeeper uh, filling up his board but giving him an opportunity to trade those imps into whatever minion show plays next turn it's just so much pressure at this point and like you said about a consecration uh this is devastating. A second Peacekeeper as well, so interesting card decisions from Joe here. Uh, Pile to Shred is just not going to be enough, and the scratch in the head probably tells you that, yeah, he's not happy with the situation. Ecop has so much burst with double PO and those buffs. But still, just going for... Um, do you even... Can, can he go for face? Uh, what do we expect next turn? Like, if there is a Sludge Belcher, you can go for the PO. And uh, he has, what, six... Uh, Eight power on board, nine with the knife, but yeah, he's not greedy here. He's just going for the damage uh, and, and clearing the minions. Yeah, I mean, you could expect a coin challenger next turn. And if the paladin has a minion on board when the challenger comes down, the challenger becomes a lot stronger. So to play around challenger next turn, uh, you would have to clear this minion. And I think it's probably what he's going to do here. Hope that he's kind of trying to decide where he wants this buff to go. That goes on the knife juggler takes that out. Oh, that's a, a nice minion to clear. You can just use uh, a 1-1 one -one here if he wants. He could even just use the Void Walker and not lose anything if he buffs that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's not but... playing around Consecration much, but uh, Consecration is, is not something that people play in the decks. And uh, he still has a Spider, though, and, uh, and then Warp. So even if Consecration hits this turn, he will still have something that he can buff with P.O.'s. And this is potentially the last turn for Joe. Double uh, Power of Overwhelming in hand. Uh, Sludge Belcher is going to put up a little bit of a wall, but there's just so much pressure on the board at this point. Ecop just needs one minion, like an Argus. Um, is it not enough just to, to win this turn? Is it not a certain kill? Like, he can buff the, the Imp, go 5 there, and then um, attack with Void Walker, attack with the Spider, get 2 damage to face, and there's 6 plus 3, 9. Uh, that, I think that's certain lethal, like, w uh, with double PO. And another, another knife juggler as well, so double the amount of knives flying around. Oh, actually, yeah, um, it wasn't lethal because he, he will have a full board with, uh, with the play I suggested, but uh, still. It has it now. I, it, he surely has it now. Yeah, I mean, he'll clear away some of these minions. Uh, he can clear the 1-1 one -one away. Uh, if he wants to, uh, and then he makes enough room for two daggers to come out from the spider. Uh, yep, and PO on something, and this should be enough. 8 plus 3 is 11, and then we will have two juggles from one spider. And that, yeah, that's enough. Wow, so a very uh, dominating win in the last game for Ecop there. The Zulok snowballing out of control and show not how many answers he needs be able to match the early game pressure so Ecot will be going forward to tomorrow and he will have to play Oskaka in the first round so he has uh, his work cut out for him yet he still has a long way to go absolutely and uh, I think he, he just brought almost the same lineup if not the same lineup as in the group stages and in the group stages he was uh, playing pretty convincingly as well and uh, just uh, he, he might be the only player in the top 8 bringing this temple mage and it really works for him he's sniping those druids and having good matchups like even versus Paladin, he was doing good with it. So, uh, congrats to Ecop and uh, congrats to Show as well. Like he played really well, but unfortunately, uh, just the top eight. So he finishes without any money, but he did play great. And uh, I, I'm super excited to see Show more in the future. But tomorrow we'll see Ecop versus Kaka. Yep, and Orange and Pavel coming up next. Orange has been on a good streak recently, training very hard with the SK gaming guys. So you know he's been a lot of work in the start of this year. He had a uh, a good performance at the end of 2015 as well, carried that over to 2016. Pavel is a player that almost made it to BlizzCon, uh, just fell short a little bit, but now 2016 is an opportunity for him to shine, and perhaps this could be his first major tournament win, we'll have to see.
Yeah, Pavel, Pavel was, um, I think, a breakthrough player of 2015, where he was uh, one of the guys who was consistently in the top on the ladder, uh, on the European ladder, and he's known for a control play. He started mostly with control priest, and then he was playing uh, hand lock and demon lock a lot. In the group stages, he just went with 3-1 and 3-0 score uh, really fast, even though he had a full control lineup. So I would expect a control lineup from him again. But now we are going to go into short break and after that we'll see this match. So stay tuned for more Hearthstone after break. <laughs> 